When I was about eight years old. When I was about eight years old. I first heard about something called climate change or global warming. I first heard about something called climate change or global warming. Apparently that was something humans had created by our way of living. Apparently that was something humans had created by our way of living. I was told to turn off the light to save energy and to recycle paper to save resources. I was told to turn off the light to save energy and to recycle paper to save resources. I remember thinking that it was very, very strange. I remember thinking that it was very strange. That humans who are an animal species, among others, that humans who are an animal species, among others, could be capable of changing the Earth's climate. Could be capable of changing the Earth's climate. Because if we were, then if it was really happening, we wouldn't be talking about anything else. Because if we were, and it was really happening, we wouldn't be talking about anything else. As soon as you turned on the TV, everything would be about that. As soon as you turned on the TV, everything would be about that. Headlines, radio, newspapers, you would never read or hear about anything else. Headlines, radio, newspapers, you would never read or hear about anything else. As if there was a world war going on. As if there was a world war going on. But no one ever talked about it. But no one ever talked about it. If burning fossil fuels were so bad that it threatened our way very existence, how could we just continue like before? If burning fossil fuels were so bad that it our very existence, then how could we just continue as before? Try not to explain it again. Why were there no restrictions? Why were there no restrictions? Why wasn't it made illegal? Why wasn't it made illegal? To me, that did not add up. To me, that did not add up. It was too unreal. It was too unreal. I have Asperger's syndrome, and to me, almost everything is black and white. I have Asperger's syndrome. I think in many ways that we autistic are the normal ones and the rest of the people are pretty strange. They keep saying that climate change is an existential threat and the most important issue of all. They keep saying that climate change is an existential threat and the most important issue of all. And yet, they just carry on like before. And yet, they just carry on like before. If the emissions have to stop, then we must stop the emissions. If the emissions have to stop, then we must stop the emissions. <laughs> That is black and white. That is black and white. There are no grey areas when it comes to survival. There are no grey areas when it comes to survival. Either we go on as a civilization or we don't. Either we go on as a civilization or we don't. We have to change. We have to change. Countries like Sweden and the UK. And the UK need to start reducing emissions by at least 15% every year. Need to start reducing emissions by at least 15% every year. And that is so that we can stay below a 2 degree warming target. And that is so we can stay below a 2 degree warming target. Now the IPCC says that we have to aim for 1.5 degrees. Now the IPCC say we have to aim for 1.5 degrees. 
So we can only imagine what that means. So we can only imagine what that means. You would think every one of our leaders and the media would be talking about nothing else. You would think every one of our leaders and the media would be talking about nothing else. But no one ever mentions it. But no one ever mentions it. Nor does anyone ever mention anything about the greenhouse gases already locked in the system. Nor does anyone ever mention anything already in the system. Nor that air pollution is hiding a warming. Nor that air pollution is hiding a warming. So when we stop burning fossil fuels. So when we stop burning fossil fuels. We already have an extra 0 0.5 to 1.1 degrees Celsius guaranteed. We already have an extra 0.5 to 1.1 degrees Celsius guaranteed. Nor does hardly anyone ever mention that we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. Nor does anyone ever mention that we are in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. With about 200 species going extinct every single day. With about 200 species going extinct every single day. Furthermore, does no one ever speak about the aspect of equity? Furthermore, does no one ever speak about the aspect of equity? Clearly stated everywhere in the Paris Agreement and the Kyoto Protocol. It is absolutely necessary to make the Paris Agreement work on a global scale. Which is absolutely necessary to make the Paris Agreement work on a global scale. That means that rich countries need to get down to zero emissions. That means that rich countries need to get down to zero emissions within six to twelve years within 6 to 12 years so that people in poorer countries can heighten their standard of living so that people in poorer countries can heighten their standard of living by building some of the infrastructure that we have already built by building some of the infrastructure that we have already built because how can we expect countries because how can we expect countries like India or Nigeria, like India or Nigeria, to care about the climate crisis, to care about the climate crisis, if we, if we, who already have everything, who already have everything, don't care even a second about it, don't care even a second about it, or our actual commitment to the Paris Agreement, or our actual commitment to the Paris Agreement. If I live to be 100, I will be alive in the year 2103. If I live to be 100, I will be alive in the year 2103. When you think about the future today, you don't think beyond the year 2050. When you think about the future today, you don't think beyond the year 2050. By then, I will, in the best case, in the best case, not even have lived half of my life. Not even have lived half my life. What happens next? What happens next? The year 2078. The year 2078. I will celebrate my 75th birthday. I will celebrate my 75th birthday. What we do or don't do right now. What we do or don't do right now will affect my entire life. Will affect my entire life. And the lives of my children and grandchildren. And the lives of my children and grandchildren. When school started in August this year, I decided that this was this was enough. When school started in August this year, I decided that this was enough. I sat myself down on the ground. I sat myself down on the ground. Outside the Swedish Parliament. Outside the Swedish Parliament. I still strike for the climate. I still strike for the climate. <laughs> Thank you.
Today we use 100 million. Today we use 100 million barrels of oil every single day. Barrels of oil every single day. There are no politics to change that. There are no politics to change that. There are no rules to keep that oil in the ground. There are no rules to keep that oil in the ground. So we can't save the world by playing by the rules. So we can't save the world by playing by the rules. Because the rules have to be changed. Because the rules have to be changed. <laughs> And it has to start today. And it has to start today. So everyone out there. So everyone out there. It is now time for civil disobedience. It is now time for civil disobedience. It is time to rebel. It is time to rebel. <laughs> Greta Thunberg, everybody! What an incredible hero she is! Lighting the way for the future.